So I'm on the couch with uh, Sean Davey and uh, she's the author of uh, two books. We're going to talk about her uh, career and photography. So you started out as a psychotherapist for yeah. maybe 15, 20 years, was it? 15 years, yeah. Why did it take you so long to discover photography and how did this happen? Well, I think, first of all, it didn't even occur to me that I wanted to be a photographer. And then how it happened was also slightly unclear too. And I think a couple of things happened. So all I can think of is a couple of things happened. And one was, as we talked about earlier on, I moved from Brighton to the West Country and everything that was familiar to me went. In, in, in fact, at that time, my father died. I lost my mother. And so there was kind of a lot of shock. And in fact, I just lost a baby too. So I moved to a very rural part of Britain and it was very uncomfortable. And alongside that, I went to see an exhibition at um, Louis Bourgeois Retrospective. And it felt like a kind of transmission in there. But she's a sculptress rather yeah. than a photographer. So how did the connection come through to photography? Well, I think it was more about what she was taking into the work. And it felt very disarming. It felt like there was... A, I just experienced her compulsion to make work and her need to make work. So I came out of that exhibition feeling very strongly that I needed to, to be creative. And so I did say at the time, I'm going to be a photographer. <laughs> you know, somewhere I knew it. I'd taken a couple of pictures and I said I'm going to be a photographer. So it was actually two years later I picked up the camera. And I know you went to uh, Plymouth. I don't know yeah. whether you went as a BA student or an MA student. MA student. Right, so you went. You didn't have a BA. You went no. straight in and did the MA. And was yeah. it easy to get into the course? Cause well, that's Jem, quite... well, Jem Southam interviewed me and I just had a couple of pictures because I'd just been refused by Brighton on a BA. So I took a couple of pictures and he just said yes. Thank God he said yes. <laughs> because then I landed on the most extraordinary training with Jem Southam and David Chandler. And these initial pictures you took, were they of uh, Alice or your family? Or Alice were there wasn't. other things? Oh, actually, Alice... Was only, it was only a year old at the time. No, I think these were just a few pictures I'd taken at home. Mm -hmm. um, that's it, yeah. You say the time at Plymouth was extraordinary. But why was it so um, engaging and so important to you? Well, I made a, a really strong connection with David Chandler and he, it was his generosity and his kindness that really supported me you know he kind of he he so understands so much about photography and he's so eloquent that it felt like I mean I'm really interested in the idea of transmission you know when you if you're open to learning and you're open to change if you sit with someone who understands something very deeply then it just affects you very strongly and, and, and it felt like that with him I could have listened to him and listened to him almost like osmosis yeah absolutely He's like, I, I couldn't get enough. And I could sit in his tutorials and listen. And so, and his advice was always so, um, you know, just always so accurate. I still got his voice in my head. You know, he just says to me, Sean, if I showed him a picture that was just not, not quite right, he'd say, that's not what you do, Sean. Mm -hmm. And it was a bit of a... How long did it take for the um, subject matter of your daughter, Alice, to emerge as being your main project? It was the second year of my MA and I was formulating ideas of what I wanted to communicate. So I was kind of cooking it up in my head. Mm -hmm. And I, had, I was making lists of ideas for probably about six months. And not knowing how I was going to kind of communicate that effectively in, because I, you know, the, the first year I think of my ph photography course, it was just really at the beginning, you know, that MA, it was the beginning of taking pictures. So I had no idea about the potential of photography. So I, I, um, I had all these lists, which was, how was I going to communicate the institutionalization of these children? 
how was it going to c communicate um, you know our struggle with difference you know the mother's story the photographer's story and you know all these lists of narratives then through that frustration I just kind of stopped thinking I decided to stop thinking and just trust the act of photography I mean, when I look at this work, it, it almost feels for you it's probably quite a therapeutic process. Would you say that was true? Possibly. <laughs> I kind of struggle with that only because I, I've not had enough time to reflect on what the work means. And it feels like I have been, since I picked up the camera, I haven't stopped. You know, I'm on to my third body of work. I need, I need time to reflect on that. I really under, I began to understand about how magical photography is. That's what I did understand. And in, in, in that way, it was very deeply therapeutic. And, um, and of course, you know, I do value what it's, what it's shown me in terms of my relationship with my daughter. How do you think uh, your relationship has changed through this process of photographing her then? I'm not sure that either, because I, I, it's really hard to kind of define, isn't it? What, what's the major influence in me forming a stronger relationship with Alice? I think, I think inevitably I talk about her a lot. Here I'm, I'm talking about her here, and public talks, and sitting in post-production looking at her. I spent hours and hours looking at her. Mm -hmm. And inevitably, I think, the distance would close. And how long did it take you to produce this body of work? Was it over a period, I assume, of a good about few years? About three years. I think about three years, yeah. And when did you, what sort of told you that the time was to sort of wrap up and make it into a, 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 a book, in fact? I just lost interest. I think I've just lost interest and and actually I still photograph I've still I've got an almost another whole body of work of Alice since so I continue to photograph her but in terms of the kind of um the can you know that you know a book contains something there are parameters I just felt I came to the edge of that mm -hmm. and I knew that it's a resolution, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you just feel it, don't you? It's a kind of intuitive response. That's enough. And actually, I didn't even say that was enough. Things kind of come, things come, uh, came into my path that enabled the book to come into fruition at that time, I think. And then the next book, which has just recently been published, yeah. is, is Martha, which is your uh, stepdaughter. Yeah. Uh, how long after finishing the Alice project did you think, that, if you like, the next person to look at and examine through photography was uh, was your stepdaughter? Well, I photograph everything, every day. So the pictures were already happening, but I think that my intention, you know, my decision to make the work, it actually came through David Chandler. Mm -hmm. And he was just felt something was quite compelling about her. And then I just thought, well, if David Chandler thinks it's compelling, <laughs> then I think I, it must be. <laughs> I mean, there's this line in the book where she says, why don't you take photographs yeah. of me? So I assume... That was also alongside that. And so that coupled in with that was definitely a signifier. And she was disgruntled. Even now, it's interesting, the other day we were, at, we were at a festival together and I was just photographing her and then someone, I saw someone and, and she just had, she, she was waiting and I could just feel her, are you going to photograph me? I mean, mm -hmm. she really, she, in, she some, it, something's important to her in terms of um, me being a witness to her. Mm -hmm. But she's of the generation where they're photographing each other all the time. Yeah, like crazy, right? yeah. Does she know that the type of pictures you're taking are quite different to the ones they're going to take of each other? Yes, I think so. But she's not... Um... I 
I don't think she's... She's not... We talk about it, but she's not really present with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't her view of the world. It's an adult's view of her. And if... At this age, particularly for her, it's all about friendship and everything's moving very fast and she's going to university. I think it will be a long time before she really stops and reflects about mm. what these images are. Um, yeah. And do you think you've grown closer to Martha through this process as well? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. I mean, even if I, you know, I've got to know her friends. So yesterday, they, you know, they came out for dinner, and they came out. Another group came around the week before. So I'm, I'm very much in the middle of her life. So her group of friends have almost inherited you as the sort of de facto yeah. mother. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. It's lovely, and I, I genuinely enjoyed their company. And, you know, I was always the photographer. I wasn't their friend. I wasn't going clubbing with them and doing all that. I was kind of popping in and out. But they all gave me, um, they all opened the door to that process quite, you know, with an open heart. I mean, of course, th these are very beautiful bodies of work and uh, they're about members of your family. The question is, have you have you run out of people now to photograph there? Are there I'm anyone not else? reproducing anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, my question is, what do you do next? How can you bring this intimacy and intensity that has been so central to these projects yeah. when you go and photograph something else or somebody else? Well, I'm photographing my third son. That's the next body of work. Ah, right. So he's the final part of the But trilogy. I have four children. Ah, oh, right. So I didn't know how I've many kids you've got. I've got years to go yet, Martin. Okay, another two books. Another two books. <laughs> and actually, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, I take, in my kind of bigger commissions, I take into those commissions um, the same energy and the same response. And I only take work that actually means something to me. So it's, I don't really look ahead. It, it almost feels irrelevant. And at the moment, I'm investigating Joseph through... And it's a complicated piece of work. I'm, I'm a bit more So challenged. Joseph's your... Yeah, he's your my 14-year-old. son? Yes. Mm -hmm. and I don't know whether... Because I know Martha's your yeah, stepdaughter. No. So I'm just being yes, clear. So, yes, absolutely. So I need a bit of family fine. tree here. Yes, no, that's it. So that he he's my blood son and it's... It's an ambitious project in terms of his, he wants to do it and then he doesn't. You know, with Martha, I always had traction. Mm -hmm. She was absolutely engaged in, in the process. Mm -hmm. But Joseph's not quite like that. Right. So he's more aloof. He's not as into Yeah, it, that's why I've had to change camera and moving on to a 10 8 because he doesn't want to be, me to be in the space that he occupies with his friends. Okay. So Martha's very willing to do that. So right. I've had to kind of really shift position and change format. As a so it's more of a formal that. occasion when you do it. Yeah. And it's, inc it's, it's incredibly intimate, actually, working with a 10 -8. It's mm -hmm. incredibly moving. And so I'm going to be making short films with mm -hmm. him. Um, so it's, just, it's an exciting process. It's difficult. But I know you did a bit of a commission uh, for the National Portrait Gallery yeah. where they asked you, I assume, to photograph people you didn't know particularly. Yeah. Was that very difficult for you? Yeah. <laughs> it was. Well, it was to begin with. And then I just let it go. And what I let go was thinking conceptually and feeling and putting really uh, unreasonable expectations on myself and just really trusting that I can build relationships quickly and that I understand something. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, we, what we can take into a situation. And so I just rested in the present and just trusted I, I would have everything I needed. But that took me a week. You so know. it took a while to, to get oh to know God, the subjects. Oh my God, it was very difficult. Well, no, I just walk in the room, build relationships up in about two or three minutes mm -hmm. and then start Two or work. three minutes? Yeah, no, very quickly, just quickly move, you know, just... And then, yeah. I mean, I guess in a sense you are coming back to your 
therapist background yeah. where you understand how these things work much better than most people I assume yeah and you know how to delve in and find a way into people's psyche yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> and it's making that initial assessment you know when a client walks in the room and and you make that very quick initial assessment mm -hmm. and it's an energetic one it's on, on their posture on their pathology you can read people learn how to read people very, very quickly, quickly. And so I can walk in the, in the room now and just kind of sense the whole family dynamic and where mm -hmm. to place myself Almost in Almost smell it. Yes. And sometimes you know, well, I think you just know where to, where to place yourself. Yeah. Because if you, if, you, if you go in too strongly, you can disrupt it for the whole session. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to do that. Right. You don't want to. So your job is to facilitate. I think so. Well, dominate. I think to enable. Yeah. I think. Well, either is the same, isn't it? Do you still have your uh, therapy uh, no. business? No. no. Do you miss it that at all? No. And I, I kind of, when I discovered photography, it was just like, it was just falling in love and everything came together. And I knew that I couldn't, I didn't want to dilute that. And I knew, that, and I suppose, I kind of also recognised that the, the psychotherapy would inform that. Mm -hmm. So, I just dropped it. You must have had some disappointed clients. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> Can you imagine if I didn't? No, because um, I know how reliant people become on um, yeah. their therapists, right? But I'd had some of my clients for years and years, and but I gave them a long time to, um, to go through that separation. Yeah. And here you are a few years on, and uh, you're now a very successful photographer. You have, uh, you know, you have a dealer. You're selling prints. Is that strange for you? Yeah. <laughs> or every day. I Do think you feel it... guilty almost? Um, why guilty? I don't know. You just might feel guilty that you're monetizing your intimacy, if you like. I'm not wealthy yet. <laughs> then I may ask me that question when I'm wealthy. But I think, at the moment, I'm. No, I don't see it like that at all. I'm not suggesting you should be guilty. No, I'm just asking. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, I recognise it as a necessary process in terms of everything that I've done in my life feels like it's a necessary process to being well. And this is just part of it. It's kind of seamless. Mm -hmm. And whether it's me spending a lot of time with a Buddhist monastery to studying social policy and or painting or it's just part of yeah process towards being healthy I think and to know yourself better through yeah the photographs that you take yeah eventually eventually <laughs> eventually and I think I'm still trying to make sense of it because it's an exhausting process mm -hmm. isn't it and it should I think be. And I think if it's when something means something and it's, it just does feel serious and it feels like working on this new project is feels excruciating. When you say the new project, are you referring to Joseph? I'm referring to Joseph, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Clearly this is have, going to have a very different dynamic to it, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And that, I guess, you're working out as you go along. And he's yeah. working it out too. How old is he, by the way? 14. All oh, right. And so I... It, I'm just photographing in my front room. Mm -hmm. That's it. For the next three years. And fortunately, he's quite, uh, he's quite a creative soul, hence we, we shaved off his hair in the first session. And he, he wanted to do it. So mm -hmm. there's a kind of, definitely a kind of collaboration like there, there has been with all my children. Even with Alice, there was an unconscious collaboration. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, it's more conscious, really. I mean, you go on a journey together, don't you? Yeah, I think there was an, something very much... I think there's something extraordinarily deep. I think I'm not sure how much was conscious or understood consciously. But when you're working, particularly with Alice, it felt like there was an unconscious um, creative process that was almost pre-verbal, really, that was driving it. 
pre-verbal or non-verbal. Mm -hmm. But that's, I think, was underlying the whole work together. And I think that's why that project for me is particularly moving. Mm -hmm. And Joseph is taking me back into that territory again. Right. Um, and I'm choosing not to think about what, what the work means too much yet because I, it hasn't presented itself fully. Which is, uh, that Have you shared time. it with other people yet? Well, the new work, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's going into Aperture, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's in it's, September. Okay, those pictures there from that, yeah. Yes. Him. Of course, and the haircut, yeah. The haircut. Um, but I've only been working on it for the last 12, 12 weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, perhaps four months. So I have another, at least another three years to go. Well, we look forward to um, seeing the results. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you.